Hello, and this is Tyler Marantet welcoming you to the Shirt of Shame Breakdown for UFC 202, McGregor versus Diaz 2. Uh, I'm, I got some issues with this card, just want to start off with that. Uh, you got a couple of uh, great fights floating around on the prelim. You got Random Marcos there, you got uh, Raquel Pennington floating around in there, you got Neil Magny closing out the fight past prelims. I know they want to throw great fights on there to push people towards uh, Fight Pass and getting a subscription, but I really think that they should have loaded up the top end of this card with a fight like that. Uh, you got Cody Garbrandt also on the prelims. Uh, one of your rising stars. I They want a good profile on him, but I think that he should have been on the main card as well. You Usually when the UFC, you uh, get a couple of uh, late last-minute call-ins. You try to put those guys near the bottom of the cards because the guys that are coming in aren't going to be in great shape but uh, the problem is that they just wanted to have uh, the card a little bit more spaced out I guess. You got Hyungu Lim versus Mike Perry, last minute call-in Tim Means versus Sobo Hamasi another last minute call-in. I just don't understand why they're doing it this time. Maybe they just know that uh, Connor's going to bring in the people so they're not going to fight that hard. Uh... So we're going to start off our breakdown with Neil Magny versus Lorenz Larkin. Uh, you look at the stats on these guys, uh, Magny has an 8 inch reach advantage. Uh, he's a, Magny is a brown belt, Larkin is a purple belt, but what do you got to take to, into account? Larkin has the best hair in all of the UFC. He always brings the hair game and I love it. Uh, when you look at the striking matchup, Larkin has great kicks, a powerful right hand. Uh, he's not the most precise boxer. He, he tends to just bite down on his mouth cart, on his mouthpiece, and hope for the best. Likes to jab his way in and throw uppercuts. He's got good head movement and pretty good counter striking. Got to keep an eye. So you'll have to be aware of that going in. Uh, Magny has good boxing, a sort of Muay Thai style. Likes to clinch up and throw knees, I guess. Uh, lots of elbows. But he's a point striker. He's got one of the best jabs in the entire sport, uh, but he's a point striker. He doesn't go for blood. Uh, when you look at the ground matchup, just looking at their BJJ rank, uh, you got to give it to Magny. And what we've seen in the UFC so far, he's got a glue-like ground game. He sticks to people. They can't shake him. You can't think of his Damian Maya fight as any indication of his skill. Everyone looks terrible next to Damian Maya. Uh... But what I think it comes down to, uh, Larkin's last loss was to Albert Tumanov, who used power punches to keep uh, to keep disrupting Larkin's offense. And Magny is not known for power or killer instinct. Uh, he tends to spend Magny tends to spend a good portion of the first round on his back, letting his opponents gas out. And uh, but Larkin is a more known as a more slower, methodical fighter. Uh, I think that he'll use kicks to negate Magny's reach advantage. And as much as I like Magny, as much as I'm a fan and want to see him do well, I think this is a bad matchup for him. And I think that uh, Larkin is going to edge him out for a decision. It's a bold way to start this uh, card, but yeah, I'm going to take some chances. After that, I'm going to skip to the regular prelims, uh, the main event of the prelims, if you want to call it that. Cody Garbrandt versus Takeya Mizugaki. Mizugaki, both guys are orthodox. Mizugaki's got a four and a half inch reach advantage. Uh, but we, we haven't seen much of Cody so far. We know he's got a powerful right hand. He cuts good angles. He's got pretty decent footwork. He's not Dominic Cruz level yet. No matter how much trash talk he does, he's not on Cruz's level. Uh, he throws good sharp leg kicks. Uh, they bite. And I think that'll uh, wear Mizugaki down. Uh, Mizugaki, his striking, he licks the dirty box, fight inside the clinch. He slips a lot of big punches, but he gets caught pretty often. And when you're looking at a guy like Cody Garbrandt, you can't slip too many of those punches. He's one of the hardest hitters you've got. Uh, their grappling style, uh, Cody likes to keep things on the feet. He has not been taken down yet in the UFC. Uh... And then working with Team Alpha Male, you know he's been putting in a lot of hours on the wrestling mat. 
Mizugaki, on the other hand, he constantly ends up on the fence, generally gets bullied. Uh, his, most of his losses are to grapplers. So, this is a good test for Cody. A good, hard veteran. Uh, it's a good, but it's a, when you look at it, Mizugaki's defensive style, he seems like a tailor-made opponent to, for Cody to get a highlight real finish. So, I'm going to go Garbrandt by first round KO. That brings us to our first main card fight. Tim Means versus Oba Hamasi. Uh, Tim Means coming off a tainted supplement uh, scandal. Uh, but I don't think you can really take that into advantage if you can believe what everything that happened uh, that was tainted supplement. So we're not going to say he's coming in weaker or less uh, ready for the fight. Uh, he throws good... Front kicks, has a sharp, fast punches, fights well as a counter puncher. Uh, his grappling needs work. It's not terrible. Same can be said for Hamasi. Uh, Hamasi uh, throws a lot of sharp combos. He's a hard hitter, uh, but he waits too much. And Means will push the action. He will be there to catch him every time he tries to set up. I think this goes to Means by decision. Uh, that brings us to hyung Lim versus Mike Perry. This should be a barn burner. Uh, if it's not a knockout of the night or performance, bon performance bonus, I think it's going to be your uh, fight of the night. you got hyung Lim, who 12 of his 13 wins were uh, finishes, 10 by KO. 10 of his 13 wins are by KO. While Mike Perry is undefeated, all 6 of his wins are by KO. Uh, problem with Perry though is he is very green. He's just recently been swimming in a small pond. Uh, he's heavy-handed, but he tends to be a point striker. He's got good ground and pound. His grappling though is very, very basic. Uh, Lim, he's not really known for his grappling either. Uh, I think it'll be a stand and bank fight. Lim is a dynamic, powerful striker with good boxing. Throws a lot of knees. I think that Lim's power and experience inside the octagon will secure him what should be a dominant performance, though. But I think that L Perry will bring it to you. Don't Make sure not to miss that fight. Uh, brings us to one of our marquee fights. The I forget what they call this one. Not, uh, I'm really space on what they call it. Uh, anyways, it's Rick Story versus Donald Cerrone. Uh, I've never seen Rick Story smile. Just saying, that's just weird to me. Uh, Cerrone ha comes into this fight with a two-inch reach advantage. Keep, people keep making a big deal that he used to be a lightweight, but as he's uh, going on, you're starting to see that doesn't make any difference for him. Uh, Cerrone's a big, was always a big lightweight, and he's always uh, and his skill just makes up the difference. Uh, Story is a southpaw. He's known for a forward blitzing style. He likes to be in people's face. Uh, and grind him out. Uh, he keeps his hands low, though. Uh, Safadin was able to touch him with head kicks. Safadin went into that fight with a uh, knee injury, and so he imagine if he'd been able to put a little bit on those punches, the fight would have gone a lot different. Uh, Story is flat-footed, though, with uh, not a lot of head movement, so I believe that Cerrone will pick up on that, and he will... And he will end up colliding with one of those head kicks. I think that this is a good fight for Cerrone to get into the top 10. Uh, but you got to remember, Story has made a career out of derailing hype trains. I mean, you look at his fights with Gunnar Nelson, Tarek Safety, Johnny Hendricks. He has wins over all three of these guys. Uh, he was an in-your-face fighter. Cerrone struggles with that. You look at his Desanios fight, his Nate Diaz fight. Uh... But I believe that Cerrone will be able to keep some distance, not let Story get in his face. And once Cerrone gets his uh, measure of him, I think that he'll be able to take him to deep waters and finish him with a head kick. Cerrone by KO in the third. Yeah. Uh, that brings us to our co-main event of the evening. Anthony Johnson versus Glover Teixeira. Uh, both guys are orthodox. John Johnson has a two-inch reach advantage. It is shocking that he ever fought at welterweight net. Uh, what you gotta realize going into this fight, 
Glover has very little head movement. Uh, he has none of that traditional boxing defense. Uh, no parries, no blocks. He takes a lot of punches clean. You look at that Cummins fight. If Cummins had Johnson's power, uh, John Cummins would have put him away. Uh, but then I think that the grappling is going to make a difference. I know that that's what Ryan Bader thought, but Ryan Bader got ahead of himself and just dove in, made a terrible mistake against a dangerous guy. Uh, Glover's wrestling is underrated, very impressive. Uh, he's got a solid ground game, great ground game, but uh, he's got no real power from the top. He doesn't really uh, use his ground and pound too, too well. Uh, Johnson has good takedown defense, so he will try to keep this uh, standing, but I do believe that Glover will be able to get him down. Uh, everybody knows about Johnson's power. don't have to go over that. you got to realize that uh, his he overextends on his punches, and I believe that Teixeira will be use, able to use that to take him down. And once he's on his back, Johnson's bottom game is not that good. Uh, but... So my official call, either Glover keeps his head perfectly still and gets knocked out in the first, or he's able to jo ground Johnson down by taking him down for three rounds straight and picks up a decision. I think Teixeira is enough of a veteran that he will be able to get avoid that big KO punch in the first round, and I think that it'll be the le the second one. I think that we will be looking at Glover Teixeira by decision and a big fight with Daniel Cormier coming up. And that brings us to... Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor. I've already done this breakdown. Uh, if you go back and look at one of my older videos, you can see probably a better breakdown. Uh, so let's, once more, with feeling. Nate Diaz has a reach, height, strength advantage. He's got a better ground game, yada, yada, yada. In the first fight, Conor, who was supposed to be the best fighter ever born, uh, fought very basic. He fought like an amateur. He... Fought like a one-trick pony who relied exclusively on his powerful left hand. And it just was not good enough to put Diaz away. I think that's his fight really just depends on how Connor wants to come out. Uh, Nate fights the same way every time he steps into the octagon. Uh, so if Connor chooses to play things more safe. Or if he wants to go out and make a statement with an early KO. I really don't see either path leading to success. It's just a matter of. Connor making it the distance and getting picked apart, or if uh, he tries to go for the KO and burns himself out early. So I'm going by Nate Diaz. I can't decide on a method. I think it really just decides on uh, how Connor chooses to fight this time. So that's my that's my uh, look at this time. Uh, I have one more uh, prediction. The main event of the New York card will be announced. After uh, the Connor Nate Diaz fight, if Nate Diaz wins, they will try and put together a fight with Eddie Alvarez or even Tyron Woodley. Who knows? Uh, if Connor wins, they will try and put it, bet, book the Jose Aldo rematch for New York, because uh, they want to make that that card epic. And I think that those two names are your way to get it done. Disagree? Agree? Think I'm a total shithead? Let me know. Uh, comment in the, comment, share, like my channel, whatever. Uh, this is Tyler from Sure to Shame. Like us on Facebook if you, if you haven't already. Uh, Tyler from Sure to Shame, signing off.